Hey everybody, I'm Frankie and this is Pat from Engine Power. And today we're going to talk all about properly prepping your power plant for power. Sounds good, doesn't it? It's a lot of peas. I'm going to pee right now. Oh boy. Okay, so what we are talking about is whether you are starting with a brand new engine or a core engine, all the steps involved from when you start to getting it ready for final assembly. And it applies to everything from a very, very basic rebuild to a full tilt racing engine. The equipment and the attention to detail is the same no matter what you do. Yeah, so there's a lot to cover, but before we get into any of that, make sure you like, subscribe, and click the notifications bell so you stay updated when new episodes drop. And if there's something you want to see, drop it in the comments and we'll have a look, see if we can make it happen. I want to see some pizza on this tape. Uh, me too. The first thing we'll talk about is actual engine teardown. Now you're gonna start with a core no matter what it is. Sometimes you start with a new block as well, but we're gonna talk about teardown on an engine that you're planning on rebuilding. It's very important to just tear the engine down in steps and be very careful and very methodical how you do it. Because just because you're not gonna use the parts doesn't mean those parts cannot tell you a story when they come apart. They'll actually tell you the engine's condition as it comes apart. For instance, if you have something that has a wasted camshaft or a really sloppy timing chain or excessive wear in the bore. That means this engine was not taken care of. That doesn't mean it's not reusable, but as you tear it down, be very, very careful. Don't throw anything away because it will help you in the long run. There's also an inspection process that goes with this. We actually look at all the parts and look for characteristics on wear patterns. Again, tells you a lot about how the engine was treated. This gives you an opportunity to also do some pre-cleaning to see if this engine is usable. What I'm talking about is if the engine is usable or not because it's cracked or not. A lot of times, gunk and things will cover up cracks that will make the engine seem like it's okay initially, but once you get it cleaned and get it Magnaflux and checked for cracks, that way you can find out if you actually have a usable core to start with. Okay, so the next step is kind of finish up that pre-clean part that Pat was talking about. Usually this makes the block way nicer to work with. It makes it easier to catch any things that you missed on inspection, like Pat said. And the way we do that to start out is usually use a wire wheel like this. We will chuck it up in a drill or a die grinder and run it across all the non-machine surfaces of the block to knock off any of that oil gunk, any of that oil debris that's caked onto that metal, and any old paint if we plan on painting the block as well. And this is just makes it way easier when you go to clean the block, all that stuff is already loosened up and it just comes right off. We will also go through and use some kind of gasket scraper on the machine surfaces to get off any old gasket material, any old sealer from maybe a previous rebuild or something like that. This is way easier to do now than it is to do later. The next step is that we will go through and chase every single threaded hole in the block with a thread chaser not a thread tap. We wanna use a thread chaser because that is meant to remove any material inside those threads, but a thread tap, if it, you're running it through a potentially damaged hole, could damage it even more by removing material. So we wanna use a thread chaser, and this will give us a great opportunity to make sure all the threads in the block are in good condition. We'll also chamfer every hole in the block with some kind of chamfer bit, and then we can move on to modifications. The first thing we'll do is generally tap any pressed in oil gallery plugs. We will make them fit an NPT pipe plug instead so that it can be removed if the block ever needs to come apart or be cleaned. So on a small block Chevy, this is generally meaning the front three over top the cam tunnel. But if there's any others, and depending on what engine you're working on, we will go through and make them serviceable. We will also go through and deburr all the sharp edges on the block. Around the main saddles, we will use a hand file because we're just trying to knock off that sharp edge. We're not trying to remove a lot of material. On the less critical surfaces of the block, we can use a die grinder like this. We have various bits that we use just to knock off that sharp edge and make the block easier to work with. We'll go through all the oil passageways in the block and we will just round off the sharp edges that we can find. We'll smooth them out because sharp edges can disrupt oil flow. So if we can make them nice and smooth, that will improve oil distribution and potentially oil pressure. So it's something very simple that you can do at home, but makes a big difference. After all your special pre-work has been done, now it's time to take the engine to the machine shop. Our favorite part because, well, we're machinists, so we love the machine shop part. 
what we'll do is you'll take it there and they will actually do a cleaning on it themselves because they have better equipment than you would have at home. So normally they have a couple different types of washers. One is a jet washer and two is a bake blast system. They both work great. The bake blast system looks a little bit better because it will actually heat the block to a very high temperature, burning off all the old oil and gasket material. And then it will go through a tumble process where it is blasted with shot and that removes everything else. But the caveat of that is once it's done, it removes all the rust, it removes everything in the block that was bad, but everything then has to be remachined. So we'll start with a line hone or a line board, depending on what you're doing with your project. Sometimes if you put an aftermarket cap on, it has to be a line board first and then finish a line honed. Then we will go through the process of boring and honing the block itself for proper cylinder finish and proper size for your piston. And then it goes to machining the deck surfaces for your cylinder heads, making sure they are parallel and equal distance to the center line of the crankshaft. There's also a similar process if you take cylinder heads, it will have to be cleaned the same way, checked for cracks and also remachined. Once they've been through a cleaning system, it's wise to machine everything again. That means redoing the guides, redoing the seats, and remachining the gasket services. Okay, so if you're taking your block to the machine shop, you're probably taking some parts with you as well, especially if they're being reused. Things like crankshaft, rods, uh, potentially even other parts if you want them cleaned at the machine shop as well. Crankshaft is always a big one because that can be an expensive piece to replace. So if you can reuse it, you want to. The first thing they do when they're gonna get it there is run it through a, a jet washer or some type of hot cleaning system like that. And then they're gonna check it with wet magnetic particle inspection. So they're gonna put a ferrous fluid over the part, run a magnet over it under uh, black light basically, and then it will find cracks in the metal. So if a crankshaft is cracked, it's really not gonna be usable. There's not a good way to repair them. So you're gonna be stuck getting a new one, but if it does check out okay, and if the journals are messed up, it might need to be resized. That means the crankshaft is gonna have to be reground. Most machine shops can do this and it's not super expensive, but it does mean that you're gonna have to get undersized bearings when you go to rebuild it. After that, it will be balanced, especially if you are changing parts in your rotating assembly. This is a critical part that we've shown on the show a bunch on a bunch of different builds. This is a very important process, but usually doesn't take too long or doesn't cost too much if you're not doing something radical. We also talked about connecting rods. Usually if you are reusing a set of connecting rods, you're potentially gonna be changing the rod bolts. And this means that the big end of the rod has to be resized. And that's something that a machine shop is gonna do because it takes very specialized equipment to do it. It's a very tight tolerance that they need to be set at. And most machine shops have a machine to handle that very, very easily. So that's something you will take with you as well. Usually if you're balancing something and doing all this other work, you're gonna take a lot of your parts to the machine shop and just kind of let them handle it. And then they will return it to you in a state that is pretty much fully machined and ready to go. So we have all of our parts and they've already been machined and they're back from the shop and they're looking pretty shiny. So that means you're ready to assemble, right? Wrong. Wrong, because there's a lot of work that you still have to do. Just because it looks good doesn't mean it is clean enough to assemble. And you see I'm holding this brush. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our nice fresh crankshaft and we are actually going to clean this. We're gonna take a brush and go through every hole in this and scrub it out preferably with some soap and water or brake cleaner or something like that. Something that will get in there and get anything that's been stuck in there because it, sometimes even though it's been through a nice crankshaft grinder and it's been polished and it's been sort of cleaned at the end, there will still be potential dirt left in it. So we're gonna make this thing as clean as possible. Like any engine project, we want this thing to be as clean as possible so it eliminates that variable causing any contamination and causing a problem. This applies to the block as well. It might be freshly machined and look really pretty, but there's a lot of potential contaminants that can be inside the block. So we'll use a similar type of brush in various different sizes and run them through every single hole in the block. What this means is that all of the plugs in the block have to be out. All those oil gallery plugs, all the coolant plugs, we want all those out so we can brush as much of the engine as possible. And like Pat said, you can do this with soap and water and a spray bottle. You can do, usually we'll do it outside. You know, this is something you can 100% do at home. We'll even put these uh, in a drill because that's kind of fun and we power wash them because that actually works really, really well. And then you're not 
sitting there trying to do it by hand, uh, but we will go through every single hole in the block and then wash it out. And when you get done washing it, make sure that you use some kind of rust preventative on all of the freshly machined surfaces because you do not want those flash rusting. You just spent a lot of time and a lot of money getting this ready for assembly and you don't want to ruin it in potentially 20 seconds. So uh, once you do that, the block is pretty close. The last thing we'll do, and this is actually really, really important, is we will heavily clean the cylinder bores. The way we'll do this is we will use a clean rag and wipe them out with lacquer thinner and you will see a lot of debris come out on that rag and then we'll use a little bit of ATF and repeat the process and then one last round of lacquer thinner and you need to clean those bores until that rag comes out completely clean. There should be no dirt or debris showing up on the rag. Once you do that, then the block is ready for assembly and then you are ready to go. I think you're picking up on the clean vibe. If we could assemble an engine the same place we could assemble computer chips, it would be great because you can't get an engine too clean when you're assembling it. And that goes for all the parts. Even though you pull them out of a box and they're brand new or they've been to a machine shop and been freshly machined, that doesn't mean they are clean enough to assemble. So same thing, some lacquer thinner, some brake cleaner, some soap and water. You gotta make the stuff as clean as you can get it before you assemble it. All right, that seems like a lot of stuff, but it is extremely important, especially if you have a lot of time and money invested in your engine build, you wanna do it right. But once you get to that point, you are pretty much ready to measure and assemble. You can watch us do that on episodes of Engine Power. Yeah, we'd like to thank you for tuning in and like you to subscribe to catch more Power Nation cool videos like this one.